This is a video produced by Johnny, Faisal and Sarah as a requirement of the course Applied Occupational Health. The amount of computer work has dramatically increased in the past 20 years. In the year 2000, about 60% of workers are required to use a computer as part of their daily duties, with 80% of them uses a computer daily. This increasing trend in computer usage at work come with a cost to the well-being of workers. In 2005, it is reported that the prevalence of musculoskeletal disorders is between 10% to 62% among computer workers. Musculoskeletal disorders associated with occupational computer use are primarily linked to the upper limbs, head, neck and back. To add on, the repetitive motion of the fingers, hands, and wrists, sustained awkward postures of the wrist and forearm, and contact pressures on the wrist may be a possible cause of injury related to the use of keyboard and mouse. That's where the Rapid Office Strain Assessment, or ROSA, comes in, considering six key ergonomic risk factors, namely, force, repetition, posture, contact stress, duration, and work organization. It is designed to be a quick and practical tool for identifying ergonomic hazards in office environments. It involves observing workers as they perform their tasks and using a scoring system to quantify the level of ergonomic risk associated with each task, which we will be sharing with you all in the subsequent section. ROSA is a picture or graphic space checklists developed to as a screening tool that can quickly quantify risks associated with each component of a typical office workstation by observing the workers and provide information to the user regarding the need for change based on reports of discomfort related to office work. The goal of ROSA is to serve as a screening tool to identify areas of priority in large office-based organizations. The form can be divided into three main sections, labeled A, B and C. Section A of ROSA assesses the ergonomic features of chairs commonly used in office settings. The evaluation criteria include factors such as adjustability, support, and comfort, all of which contribute to the overall ergonomic suitability of the chair. Can be subdivided into chair height, pen depth, armrests, and back support. Section B of the ROSA evaluates the ergonomic part of monitors and telephones in the workplace. Setup of computer monitors, which is crucial for promoting comfortable viewing angles and reducing strain on the eyes, neck, and shoulders. The evaluation criteria include monitor height, distance, tilt and swivel. Setup of telephones or other communication devices commonly used in the workplace evaluated by its placement, accessibility, or reachability, types, whether a hands-free headset used or conventional telephone used. This section focuses on evaluating the ergonomic quality of computer mouse and keyboards to ensure they support user comfort and productivity. For the mouse, ROSA assesses factors such as size, shape, and button placement to ensure it fits comfortably in the user's hand and promotes a relaxed grip. Moving on to the keyboard. ROSA considers keyboard height and angle, layout and wrist support features. The final ROSA score integrates the assessments from sections A, B, and C to provide a comprehensive evaluation of ergonomic conditions in the office environment. Once the final ROSA score is calculated and interpreted, organizations can prioritize and implement appropriate interventions to address ergonomic hazards identified in the assessment. To calculate the score for Section A of the ROSA, which focuses on evaluating chairs, we need to assess the chair's ergonomic features along both the vertical and horizontal axis. Vertical axis score consists of the chair height area and seat pan depth area. Based on the observation, we can get a specific scoring for each area. The picture and description for each score is easy to understand and self-explained. For example, in this scenario, if the chair is too low with knee angle bend being less than 90 degree, the score is 2. If there is other situation like non-adjustable chair height, we can increase the score by 1 as indicated. Hence, the area score here is 3. For seat pan depth, if the space between knee and edge of seat is less than 3 inches, then the score is 1, if the pan depth is not adjustable, we increase the score by 1, then the area score for pan depth is 2. Subsequently we can combine the 3 and 2 calculated to get the vertical score. For the horizontal axis, it consists of armrests and back support. Again, the scoring principle is the same. If the armrests are too high or too low, resulting in shoulders not properly supported, the score would be 2 to start off. Based on the surface or position of the armrests, we can consider to add on more points. For this case, we consider the surface to be hard and non-adjustable, therefore the total for this area adding up with the initial 2 will be 4. If worker leaning forward on observation, start with a score 2, plus extra 1 if not adjustable. Subsequently, we add up 4 and 3 to get the horizontal score of 7. How do we get the chair score? Adding the vertical and horizontal score? This is the ROSA scoring instruction. For section A, once we have the vertical axis score and horizontal axis score, then we need to refer to the scoring chart to get the chair score. I in our case, the vertical is 5 and horizontal is 7. Then we get a section score of 6. Do you feel like we are missing something here? 
Yes, the consideration of duration. Still remember the risk factors we mentioned earlier on? In ergonomic assessment, we will always need to consider the impact of duration. Therefore, in the ROSA, the consideration of plus minus of the scoring is based on the following table. If the duration is less than 30 minutes continuously or less than 1 hour in total per day, we minus 1 to the score. If greater than 1 hour continuously or per day more than 4 hours, we plus 1 to the score. Any duration in between, the score would be 0. Like say, in the example, he or she is a clerk, happened to sit on the chair more than 1 hour continuously, then we need to add 1 to the final score. Then the final section A score would be 7, instead of 6. Now, we come to section B. We need to get the monitor and phone area score. Again, the scoring principle is the same. Based on the observation, we choose the appropriate score and consider whether or not to add additional score. In this example, we assume the arm length, screen distance and angle were all normal, base score of 1, but the position of the screen requires the worker to turn his head more than 30 degree, plus 1, glare on the screen, plus another 1, no documents holder indicating the worker need to turn his head between the monitor and document frequently when typing. Total score of 4 for this area, we jot down first at the right upper corner. Next for the telephone, we assume the phone is located at a far to reach area, the phone is answered using hands, no option of hands free, then the area score is 3 for telephone. The scoring instruction for section B is not the same as section A, remember in section A, we consider the duration after we get the chair score. Here, for each monitor or telephone score, we need to appropriately adjust the score based on duration. The table is the same. Considering long hour in front of the monitor add 1 to 4 to get 5 as the monitor score. But he or she seldom answer phone call, we subtract 1 to the area score and get phone score of 2. To get the ROSA score for section B, we need to again refer to the scoring chart. Monitor 5, phone 2, then we get the score of 4. Record down the 4 here. Section C is about assessing mouse and keyboard. Again, the logic is the same. Like say after assessment we get 2 for mouse, and 5 for keyboard. The instruction is the same as section B, to consider appropriate duration score, before referring to scoring chart. Referring the same table based on the duration observed or recorded. Same worker, clerk, typing is the main job scope, long duration, then we add in 1, to get the final area score of 3 and 6. Refer to the scoring chart, the score for section C is 5. Record it accordingly here. Next, we need to combine the score of section B and C into the peripheral and monitor score. Based on the example, we have three scores in section A, B and C, which are 7, 4, and 5 respectively. To get combined the score of section B and C, we will need to use the score 4 as the vertical axis score and 5 as the horizontal axis score for the peripheral and monitor score. Refer to the scoring chart, we get 5 as the score. Then we need to bring forward the score from peripherals and monitor score, 5, to the grand score chart's horizontal axis, to get the ROSA final score. Another score we need is the chair score. Still remember our chair score? 7. Then we can get the final score for this ROSA, which is also 7. The ROSA final score is broken into two areas, white indicating further assessment not immediately required, and the pinkish area indicating further assessment required as soon as possible. As you can notice here, those scores of greater than 5 are deemed to be high risk and the workstation should be assessed further. Based on the assessment results, recommendations can be made to mitigate the ergonomic hazards, to promote a safer and more comfortable office environment. These are the references, that's all from us. If you like our video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel. Adios.